Hello and welcome again. This is the second video on El Gamal encryption scheme. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, one example that uses small numbers. In the previous video, we talked about a little bit of the um, uh, theoretical part or how is it done using just uh, letters. And in this case, we're going to do an example with small numbers. Now, remember that this is will not be a practical example because if you want to use this, uh, let's say in real life, by today's standards, you need to choose the prime number to be at least 10, 24 bits. But this is just for an example as we're going to use just small numbers. So let go, just, let's go into the first phase. Remember that we set it, set it up in terms of uh, phases. So the first phase will be the setup phase, which is the one that Bob does. So what Bob has to do is he has to compute his public key and he publishes it, right? So anybody can, can get it, can give him or send him uh, messages. So the way he's gonna compute his public key is the first thing he has to do is he has to choose a prime number, which in practical cases, this will be a large number that because we are using an example here only, and we're gonna choose, let's say for example, 79, which is a small prime number. Now, Bob also had to choose a generator of CP star, uh, which in this case, we're gonna choose uh, this alpha to be 30. This is 30 here is a generator for Z79 and start. You can double check that that is a generator. Now in practical cases, there will be algorithms, some probabilistic algorithms that help you find these generators in case of the prime number is actually very large. But in this case, it won't be difficult to check because these are small numbers. So he chooses a prime number, then a generator of, of Z, whatever that prime is, star. So it happens to be 30. The next thing uh, is that Bob is, has uh, chooses a random number B, which this is gonna be his private key that has to be a number between two and P minus two. Uh, this number here is 77 is P minus two because remember here P is 79. So let's, in, let's see for this example, let's say that Bob chooses uh, 61 to be his private key. So once he does these three choices here, uh, then he has to compute this part, this number here, which is going to be also part of the thing that he publishes. So what he's going to do is going to take alpha, which is the generator, to the exponent that he chose here, which is randomly chosen, modulo the prime number. So in this case, alpha is 30, as you can see here. Uh, then B is 61, and the prime is 79. So you have to do this modular exponentiation here, which you can do very easily using a computer. Now, this is going to give you 59. You can go ahead and double check that that is actually the case. Now, what he has to do is now uh, Bob's job is done in terms of doing his part of publishing uh, the key. The only thing he has to do now is, of course, go ahead and publish this in, say, on a server or a web page. So remember, we called that his public key. The notation was k pov, which is a triple, so three numbers. The first number will be the prime number he chose. The second number will be the generator. And the third number will be the one that he computed with this modular exponentiation that you see here. So in this case, we have 79, 30, and 59. So that's the public key. So I'm going to show you the picture here. Let's say this is in the side of Bob here. Uh, this is small letters that I hope you can see there. It's exactly what I just said earlier. Bob chooses the prime number, the generator, a random number with the 2 and P minus 2. It does uh, the modular exponentiation. And finally, he has the public key, which is this triple that is here. So he's go ahead and it's going to publish that for anyone to see, for anyone who wants to send him secret messages. So once he do he's done that, Alice or anyone could send secret messages using his public key that is right here. All right, so now let's suppose that now Alice wants to send some kind of message to Bob. Okay, so this will be the encryption phase that is going to be done by Alice. Now, one important thing is that the message that Alice can send has to be a number between 1 and 78 and that is because it has to be some number here in this group z79 star now you can imagine that that could be kind of a restriction unless you are willing to as it says here if the message is longer let's say the message is uh, 
a number which is for example 150 then in that case you will be doing uh, increasing by blocks of 78 or less and will have to do you have to use padding in some cases if you want to send a longer message now to make this simple we're going to just use any number that is here between 1 and 78 so in this case let's suppose uh, for this particular case that the plain text that Alice wants to send is number 44 which could represent a letter or some kind of message in this case it's too short to represent a long message that but for this particular case it's gonna work it's just an example so Alice has to do also some choices remember from the previous video she has to choose a random number again between 2 and 77 and it's 2 and p minus 2 that should be chosen at random and remember it's important that you want every single time that Alice wants to send a message she has to choose a random number here so this A in theory should not be used again for any other message unless that happens to be the random choice that she makes so a random number between 2 and 77 let's say is 4 so now Alice is going to do the computation of the ephemeral key now remember the ephemeral key is going to be sent through the channel and that's the key that Bob will use to compute the shared key so I was going to compute the ephemeral key which is going to be used only once only once for this particular uh, message that is here or this particular choice um, of, to be more specific this particular choice of A that is here so the ephemeral key which is denoted by key E is equal to the generator alpha that was the one that Bob chose and the A that Alice just chose right here now remember the alpha is public so anyone can do this but A this exponentiation only Alice could do that because then she's the one choosing the A and this is an all modulo P now uh, remember that the generator is 30 the number that she uh, chose was a 4 and this is modulo to the prime which is also public so she gets 13 there so that's the F metal key from there she's gonna use or she's gonna use this to compute the actual share key which is the one that has to be kept secret so Alice is gonna compute the share key from the F metal uh, here which is uh, is gonna be B to the A and that's modulo P now B in this case is 59 that is also a public because remember that was the part of the public key that Bob published. A is the number that she chose and this modulo P, modulo the prime here, which is 79. So let me just put it here. Uh, this is gonna be A79 there. So that's just 79. Now doing that module exponentiation, you're gonna get 25. So we have the F metal key, we have the cherry key. So once we have these two things, then we are almost done to send the message because now the only thing that Alice has to do is find the ciphertext with this shared key that is here and remember the only thing that she does is she's going to multiply the plain text by this shared key so Alice computes the ciphertext which is what I just said you take the plain text x multiply by the shared key modulo p which is the prime number so in this particular case remember Alice chose to send the 44's message the k here is 25 multiplication modulo 79 and so if you do actually all this you get 73 that is here so we get 73 that's why all right so alice wants to send the ephemeral key which is the one we just computed here which is uh, let me show you here that's 13 and the actual ciphertext which is 73 so 1373 and she's gonna send of course that to Bob so I have a little picture here all these small letters that you see here is what just I just told you the computation that Alice has to do she's gonna send uh, this pair of numbers the ephemeral key and the ciphertext all of this through the insecure channel so Bob is gonna get that information which is a pair of numbers 1373 so that would be the part of Alice done already now of course uh, Bob has to get that message and he he has to decrypt that uh, the pair of numbers. So this will be the last phase, will be the decryption phase, the one that Bob does again. So let's read in here. So Bob is going to receive the ephemeral key 
and the ciphertext, which is in this case 1373. Now he has to compute the share key, of course, because that's the main part. That's the part where he has to actually decrypt that message. So and the way he computes that is he's going to use the ephemeral key, the one that uh, was sent through the channel, this one, to the uh, this Bob secret key, which is the one that he kept secret. Remember, this was not sent through the channels, so this was the one that he kept secret. That's the Bob secret key. So if you recall, at the beginning, that was a 61. That was a Bob secret key. And the ephemeral key is right here, that's 13. So is this model exponentiation, the prime here is 79. So we with 25. So 25 is the share key. If you look at this number that is here, the share key 25, if I scroll all the way back to the computation that Alice did, Alice also got that number. Now, if you're doing this by hand, you have to get the same K in both cases. The share key is the same. Okay, so now Bob has the shared key. Now he can decrypt the message. And the way he decrypts the message is he has to do a multiplication, but the multiplication by the inverse of K modulo P. So we need to compute this uh, inverse here. Now let's recall what that is. What is the inverse of K modulo P? The inverse of k modulo p is a number, let's call that number z, in such a way when I multiply that number by k, it's congruent to 1 modulo p. Basically what that's saying is that this multiplication modulo p gives me 1. And that's exactly the definition of inverse if you think about uh, inverse as an inverse of numbers. So for example, the inverse of uh, 2 is 1 half because 2 times 1 half is 1. But the multiplication here, remember, is modulo p, so we have to do this modulo p. So he knows uh, k is 25 because he computed and then he has to find a number z such that 25 times z is converted to 1 modulo 71. Now we did, we have kind of mentioned this computation already in some other videos and what you have to do is you have to find this z using the extended Euclidean algorithm, the extended algorithm that computes the greatest common divisor. Let me recall that. So when you have the 25 and the 79, of course, they have to be um, relatively prime, meaning that the greatest common divisor between both is only one. And if this is true, by number theory, which you remember that we covered that in, in the class, I'm going to put a video uh, link here and a video and a link in the description of this video uh, to the to the lectures that explain um, how to find this S and T so that 25S plus 79T is equal to 1 when we know the GCD is equal to this. Now this is a theorem that we saw. I'm going to put the link in that description and then that coefficient that multiplies that 25, that's going to be the inverse of 25 modulo 79. And remember this specific way you do this and that's the extended Euclid algorithm. Now, if you actually go ahead and do that computation, you're going to get this S to be 19. Uh, the element has to be an element of Z79 star. So this has to be an element of Z79 star. All right, so finally, we have a K inverse is uh, 19. So we're going to take the ciphertext that was the same the thing sent through the insecure channel multiplied by the inverse of k modulo 79, which in this case is 19. So it's 73, which is the ciphertext times 19. Modulo, this is all modulo 79, all modulo the prime number. And we finally get 44. Now, if you remember, this was the original meshes of Alice. So this is actually the plain text. And that's it. That's how the this example works. Of course, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is all um, with small numbers. If you were to do this in reality, you actually have to choose this prime number to be large, at least 1024 bits by today's standards. So uh, that's it for the uh, for the example of this video. So in the next video, uh, we'll keep discussing another aspect of the. Gamma uh, encryption standard. So I will see you in the next video.